Nothing is worse than an overfit strategy, where as soon as you launch the strategy live with real money, it fails and starts costing you money, right? It starts having loss after loss after loss and all that effort you put into developing and building that strategy, those hours of work, back testing, testing out of sample and doing other robustness analysis testing goes out the window because you just have a strategy of losing money. And you're like, why am I doing this? Why am I algo trading? This sucks. So I'm going to be talking about in today's video, how to avoid overfitting your strategy and some of the techniques I use in my automated trading systems to get over that hump. Okay. Before we get started, if you're new here, my name is Jacob Amaral. I build code, test and trade my own live trading systems on the futures market. If you find value in these types of videos, I would really appreciate a subscription, a like, or a comment below. I really appreciate that from you. And if you want to learn more about automated trading and trading systems, see the links in the description below. So before we get started, what is overfitting, right? What is an overfit strategy? What does that mean? Cause you may not know what that means. So an overfit strategy, if I were to simply describe it is a strategy that only works in one sequence. Okay. You have a sequence of events could be price movements. It could be volume. It could be a market regime and it works during that sequence, but that sequence is not happening again. Okay. That pattern is not happening again. And thus your trading strategy is fit to that pattern, which is no longer happening. Okay. So it's overfit to that sequence. It could be, like I said, it could be a market regime. It could be two or three market regimes and it works during those environments, but it doesn't work in other environments. Okay. Or it's extremely overfit where, you know, the, the pattern may have happened two or three times in the past, but has not happened again. And thus, you know, it's, it's fit to that pattern essentially. Okay. So let's give you an example, right? Let's say you find a pattern where buying on Mondays and selling on Fridays for S and P 500 works. Okay. And maybe it worked, you know, 2008 to 2012. Okay. So you fit your trading parameters, your trading strategy to that time frame, those four years, 2008 to, to 2008 to 2012, if I can talk here, geez. And you know, buying on Mondays and selling on Fridays worked. It was very profitable. Now you fit your strategy to those four years, which means that, you know, that's the only data that you were privy to. It worked during that time, but what about thereafter? Okay. So a poor algo trader only be privy to that data and would use all the data, right? And that's, that's a problem, right? If you use all the data, then you're overfitting because you're, you're fitting to that, that, that time period, right? And let's say at the end of 2012 or beginning of 2013, you start trading that strategy and use all those four years in your development, in your back testing, buying on Monday, selling on Friday, and it was wildly profitable. And you start in 2013, what's most likely going to happen is that your strategy is going to fail. It's going to suck. It's going to probably lose money in 2013 and cost you a lot of money. Okay. So that's what overfitting is when you fit a trading strategy, either the entry rules, the exit rules, I mean, usually all the rules, the conditions, right? You fit all the conditions to a time period. Let's go back to that example of buying on Monday, selling on Fridays. Let's go back in time. Let's say it's the end of 2012 and you start testing the strategy. You have this idea of buying on Monday, selling on Fridays. Okay. That is your trading strategy idea. To avoid overfitting, the simple solution is that instead of using all the four years, 2008 to 2012, you only use a part of the data for your initial idea generation. So instead, what I would do is I would say, okay, from 2008 to 2010, that's going to be my in sample data. That's going to be where I come up with my ideas. So you test your buy on Monday, sell on Friday idea, and you find out it doesn't, it doesn't work from 2008, 2010, right? It's unprofitable. It actually wasn't a good strategy. It was actually only good from 2010, 2012. So immediately that would 
tell you to say, hey, okay, this strategy isn't good. I'm going to test another idea. All right. So immediately that in sample period, you know, dividing it in two, where you're not aware of 2010 to 2012, because you're not aware of it, it actually didn't work in 2008 to 2010. So you come up with an idea. All right. So you test a new idea and you have another idea and you say, okay, what about, you know, buying if the RSI crosses below 30 and selling if it crosses above 70. All right. And let's say it's the NASDAQ features. So you test it. That idea from 2008, 2010, you run a back test. It's positive. It has a positive return. You like it. And you say, okay, let me, now this was good. Let me try and make it better. All right. What you're not going to do is you're not going to test it in 2010, 2012 yet. Right. You're, you're only going to keep your 2008, 2010 data. You optimize, you optimize. And maybe you find it was actually better to buy if the RSI was 35 and sell if it's 75, right? That gave you a better return, right? So you've optimized 2008, 2010, which is okay. Cause you're still not aware of 2010 to 2012. You say, okay, this did even better. The strategy looks great. Then you're going to do an out of sample test from 2010, 2012. Okay. So you're going to lock in those rules. You're not going to change them, right? Buy if our RSI crosses below 35, sell if it crosses above 75 from your optimized results. You're going to lock in those rules, not change them, and then run a separate back test from 2008, 2012. Okay. Then you find that it makes money. You're like, okay, it also worked in 2010, 2012. It made money. Now, more importantly, it's not, it should not just make money. It should be risk uh, a good risk adjusted return, right? So personally, I use return to drawdown. I'm looking for a return to drawdown above two, 2.0. So the net profit divided by the max drawdown, which gives you a risk adjusted metric, right? For every uh, point in risk, you have a, 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 a ideally a greater point in return. Uh, so you should be looking for a good risk adjusted return, not just net profit, but let's say hypothetically, out of sample, right? It also has a greater than 2.0 return to drawdown. This simple technique of testing out of sample, and it is very simple. It's, it's very basic. And, you know, if you're an intermediate or expert trader, this should be, you know, a given, but this very simple, basic test will throw, a, throw out a lot of overfit strategies, right? Strategies that only worked in the in sample, but not out of sample, right? Or vice versa. For a strategy to work both in sample and out of sample, you're going to have a better chance in having a robust strategy. So when you turn it live, it has a better chance of making money. All right. Simply splitting up your in and out of sample period. Okay. Now you want to use a risk adjusted return metric to decide if that strategy passes or not. Okay. So return to drawdown is what I use. Some other traders use sharp ratio, Sortino ratio, Calmar. There's no one best metric, but I prefer return to drawdown. I think it's the best. I think it's, it fits my style of risk adjusted returns, what I'm looking for. And that's what you want to use. Now your next question may be, okay, how much, how much data should I use? How many years? Right? So you want to use personally, I'd say you want to use at least two years for the in and out of sample period, because you're going to have a lot of mar different market regimes. Okay. If we look at our 2008 to 2012, uh, data set, right. You had a bearish market in 2008 where, you know, most, most instruments, most assets went down in price. And then I would say 2009, 2012, you had, you know, a bullish market, at least in, in stock indices for sure. So you have, you know, several different regimes, you know, at least, at least two regimes. If you look at stock indices, if you look at more commodities, you may have more regimes, but usually two years. So a total of four years, uh, will give you enough market regimes to, to make sure your strategy is robust enough. Okay. Personally, I've been using the last four years. So 2021 to today, essentially, uh, where usually 2021, 2022 is my in sample, right? 2021 was incredibly uh, bullish. 
2022, uh, incredibly bearish for, for stock indices. Commodities were bullish, I would say, during 2022. So that's my in sample, and then usually 2023 and 2024 out of sample. Uh, which were, you know, some other market regimes as well. So I recommend at, at least four years uh, in your testing. That should give you enough market regimes to test, both in and out of sample, period. Um, and then, of course, there's more testing that I recommend, okay? And maybe I'll talk about this in another video, but there is Monte Carlo analysis, which we have software to test. Uh, there's also a period where you want to run your strategy in a simulation environment. I recommend anywhere from the last nine months to a year, the strategy has to make money after testing, even after out of sample testing before trading it live. And of course there's, you know, correlation analysis to see if it actually fits your portfolio. Is it going to interfere with other strategies? Uh, and then capital requirements too. But in conclusion, simply, you know, having a dedicated out of sample period where you're not meddling with the results will you know, throw out, it will, will cause you to throw a lot of strategies in the trash. Okay. That's it. Let me, let me know if you found value in the comments below and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.